So Jesus is on a Sabbath eating with one of the leading Pharisees and what are the people there doing? They're observing him carefully. Now, why do you think they're observing him carefully? Because they want to imitate him? No, they're observing him carefully because they want to accuse him of something. And that is one of our Lord's unfortunate realities. The people are, are out to get him, it seems. So he is there, invited by one of the leading Pharisees, and he noticed how they're elbowing each other for the, for the best place. Now, on the one hand, Jesus is giving us some sound dinner etiquette. You know, it's just, it's not, it's, it, it doesn't endear you to other people for you to elbow your way to the best seat. You should really just kind of go and, and, and blend in and not, not try to be somebody. But that's really not the point. The point is, this is the wedding banquet. This is the wedding banquet. You've been invited. Don't think you're somebody. You know what? This wedding banquet, you know who this wedding banquet's being thrown for? Sinners. If you're not a sinner, you're not allowed to come. We're all here under the same reality that Jesus comes to invite us. Jesus is the groom. The church is the bride. The wedding banquet is the mass. You've been invited. This story that Jesus is telling, when you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, don't think you're going to the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may come. So there's two layers happening. Yes, I think it's sound social advice, but there's a whole nother dimension happening. And then we get to this idea of the poor and the crippled and the lame and the blind. See, the Pharisees, they would not have invited the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind to their dinner party. You know why they would not have invited them? Because they might be ritually unclean. They, would have been, they might have defiled them, according to the book of Leviticus. And so not only did they think they were better than them, they were pretty sure they did not want to hang around with them because they had those conditions for some reason they were probably sinners. Well, guess what, brothers and sisters? Guess who the poor and the blind and the lame and that and all of those descriptions, guess who they apply to in this circumstance right here? To you and me. And guess what? We've been invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And you know, even if we don't want to, even if we wake up in the morning and make up our mind that we don't want to be judgmental or we don't want to gossip or we don't want to look down on others, even if we, even if we have promised ourselves we're not going to do that today, right? Don't sometimes we fall into that? You know why? You know why? Because you're the poor, you're the crippled, you're the blind, and you're the lame. But God has invited us to this wedding banquet. And we come here today as guests of honor of the king. And it may be very tempting for us sometimes to think we're better than other people to elbow our way to the front, but Jesus is admonishing us not to do that, to recognize that our very reality is that Jesus is the host who invites us and that we would see ourselves in our proper place because that sin that seems to invade our lives, the sin of pride, this encounter right here, the invitation that has brought us into this church. You know, I, I was thinking yesterday, this thought came to my brain, and uh, sometimes people will say, I've heard this said, I'm not going to that church, it's full of hypocrites, it's full of sinners, it's full of those people. I said, that's right, we have room for one more, you know? It's, it's, 
That's right. That's the only people that are allowed to come, is people that need to come, okay? It's the people that need to come here and be healed and cleansed and lifted up and strengthened that we may go out into the world and strive to be the people that God has created us to be. So, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we remember today, everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The the gospel today and it speaks about humility in this figure of recognizing that we should not elbow our way to the front. What does it mean to be humbled? Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. The one who humbles himself will be exalted. The virtue of humility. Every vice has a mitigating virtue and the vice of pride is mitigated by humility. What does it mean to be humble? To be humble is not to deny our gifts. For Michelangelo to say that he was not a good artist would not have been humility, that would have been a lie. Humility is to recognize the gifts that we have, to use them to the ability that we can, and to thank God for those gifts. We recognize that but for the breath of God, what are we? But for the breath of God, what are you? You are but dust and ashes. So God in his goodness has taken the dust of the earth, he scooped it up, he's breathed his love and his life into the dust of the earth. He has created you and he has created me. God, infinitely perfect and blessed in himself in a plan of sheer goodness, has freely created us that we may share in his blessed life. And so God in his goodness breathes his life into the dust of the earth and he's created you and me. And you and I, sometimes we can get full of ourselves. Sometimes even if we don't want to. So the church invites us here, recognizing that we are the blind and the lame and sinners invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. We come in here hearing Jesus say to us today, everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. We don't deny our gifts, but rather we attribute the reality of God's grace to the gift of God and his help. Humility helps us see the qualities of others. Humility helps us to measure ourselves against God, not the other guest. Humility recognize the gifts that we have come from God and we must serve God. So, Jesus is giving some advice in the gospel today. One is how to behave at dinner parties and the other is that when we give, when we are generous, when we hold a, um, when we do something good for others, we should really try to detach ourselves from any reward that we might get in this life. That when we give, we should recognize that we strive with all our heart to give to those who cannot repay us. It's kind of strange. I say this to people often. And then I read this gospel and I was thinking, I have, to re, I have to rethink my formulation of that. Because I say, you know, we cannot put God in debt to us. God doesn't owe us anything, right? God created us out of sheer goodness. We can't say, God, you owe me. But then I read the gospel here and it says, rather when you hold a banquet, invite the poor and the crippled and the lame and the blind and blessed indeed will you be because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So we desire to be generous in our invitation, in our gift, in our giving to others so that when we give, God will give to us. So who's invited here to this wedding banquet? Who's invited here? The poor, right? The blind? These are all kind of spiritual maladies that we might have. The lame, the crippled. 
And when we come in here, sometimes infected with that disease of pride, Holy Mother Church asks us to make a few acts of humility. So what do we do? We come into the church and we remember our place by bending our knee. When we bend our knee and we genuflect in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament and we make the sign of the cross, that's an act of humility. When we begin the Mass by taking an, an inventory of ourselves and beating our breast and saying, through my fault, through my fault, through his fault. No, that's not what we do, is it? No. no. What do we do? We do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And we take responsibility for our own sin and sinfulness. And we ask God as we humble ourselves to be lifted up. So we bend our knee and we beat our breast. And the most prominent and the most clear and the most concrete act of humility that we do is as we, as we prepare to receive Holy Communion, we say, Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and I will be healed. We are not worthy to receive our Lord. We're not worthy to be invited to the wedding banquet. But God has made us so. And let's look at our Lord's life for just one second, just a very quick glance. He was born in a stable. He was born in a cave. He was born among the animals. He was a refugee chased out of his home country by an evil king. He was a manual laborer. He washed people's feet. feet. He was rejected and he was killed. You know, my brothers and sisters, we are here today to be lifted up by Christ, but we humble ourselves recognizing that we were not worthy to be invited to this wedding banquet. And may we ourselves be generous to others as God has been generous 